Welcome everyone. We are back for another session of Productivity Power Hour. And today we're here to talk about something very exciting, which is Obsidian version 1.0. That's right. Obsidian is out of beta, which is so great because for those who've been using Obsidian up until this point, you know, it's basically been in version 0.15. That's like the last stable version. And then for those on the insider track, you got version 0.16. And so for me, who's been with Obsidian for a little while now, I was basically accept, expecting V0.16 to be like just another minor release. I would talk about it. It'd be great. And then life would go on because mm, I guess most of us were never really sure when Sable was going to go out. So of course, we're waiting for the team. And so originally, this session was actually titled Obsidian version 0.16 update. But to ver my very pleasant surprise, they decided that version 0.16, the changes that they've made, have basically qualified everything to now be officially 1.0, which is basically, for those new to software and versioning, that is stable production release version, which is super exciting. And again, huge congratulations to the team for bringing it this far. And so, of course, the question we have here is, what is new with Obsidian version 1? Now, you'll notice here, if you're taking a look at my UI, that things are actually a little bit different than in the past. So a couple of things you'll notice is that version one primarily comes with a major visual refresh. And so if we take a look at this, you'll notice that one, we have a tabbed interface. This is about probably like the biggest change when it comes to that, in the sense that you'll see that we have different tabs. So we can see here, if I look at Obsidian, let's see, do I have zero, uh, let's see. Oh, here's where I was looking at 0 0.12, right? This was way back in October 19th, 2021. But then if you check this out, if I go ahead now and take a look at other, let's see, other Obsidian, let's see, let's take a look at Obsidian Published View, for example. You'll notice now that like it switched, swapped out the tags, tabs, but you'll see inside of here, there's actually history inside of this, there's tab history, which is awesome because now it actually functions a lot more like a browser. And so this is actually a really, like, this is awesome because again, most of us are working with browsers day to day for work. And so the fact that they've now brought the UI closer to that, I think will make it a lot more familiar for people. And so here we can see, we can split that up and then we have multiple tabs. Like this is great. And so it's very clean, looks really good. The other thing though, you also get <coughs> struggling a bit today. So one of the <clears throat> one of the layouts that you probably saw me use in a lot of my past streams is something that's called Andy's mode. And so what that is actually now renamed as tab stacks. So if I open the command palette with command P and hit tab or stack tabs, you'll hear toggle stack tabs. You'll see here that it flips all of my file titles to the side. And then everything here you'll see is like basically it has this look where, as you can see, as I open new tabs, it creates is actually pretty beautiful. First of all, the fact that they got the animation so smooth, love it. But then it's great because as you're looking through, you can actually pick through and be like, oh, I want to be on this chapter. I'm going to be on this chapter and then, or tabs, I guess, to be more specific. And it's really, really pretty. Now, granted, this isn't for everyone. So stack tabs is totally optional. So we toggle stack tabs right back. Boom, you're back to what you're used to. But for me, to be honest, I actually do like stack tabs a lot. So we're going to go ahead and leave that uh, open for a little bit. So boom, boom, boom. There we go. And so the other thing that we have here as far as UI updates is the fact that we have this inline file title. And that's new. Because in the past, what you actually had was you could only see the front matter and then the rest of your title. So something that I used to do a lot was I'd have a heading one where I'd have Obsidian version 1.0 updates like this. So this would actually be like my simulated file, file note title. But the kind of irritating thing about doing it like this is that I would have to go up into like the tab and I have to manually update it to be like, oh, uh, Obsidian updates one, two, three, for example, and then my file title would update. But I guess they figured out that, well, people were doing this a lot. And so rather than have you create your own file title, they figure, why not make this part of the UI itself? So now the file title is actually right here directly. And you can see, boom, one, two, three, this actually updates the file name, um, the actual file name directly. <clears throat> the only slight problem I see with this though, to be fair, is that sometimes my file names are very, very long. And so ex an example of this is if I'm labeling like a course and a lesson, 
it, my notes can sometimes be super long. So for example, uh, let's take this one, for example. So um, earlier, I, or not earlier, let me not say earlier, because then that'll confuse people. <clears throat> You'll see here, I have this TypeScript Fundamentals V3 course. And this thing, if I create a new note with this, and then I go like this, and I go like lesson 01 introduction, this is a long file name. And so again, I would like the ability to eventually have the chance to say, you know what, instead of the file name, I want to actually define an alias that's just like introduction. And I want that to be what shows up at the very top. Again, that's like a little bit of a UX thing for me because sometimes I do want to be specific about what shows up as my file title. Because for me personally, I typically would go like 01 introduction. Oh, I cannot type. It's just like this. That's what I would typically prefer. Um, <clears throat> but no matter. Now, in case you're wondering though, you're like, okay, you know what? I agree with you. I don't like the file name. Let's say, let's say you, you totally hate that. Obsidian's team, true to its form, provides a way for you to hide that. So just know that if you go inside of your preferences, which I'm accessing by command comma, and we go inside of appearance, you'll see that down here, you'll wait, uh, do, 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 down, down, down. Here we go. Inside of advanced, you'll be able to find actually things like whether to show the inline title. So here, if I go ahead and turn this off, you'll see that this reverts back to what your uh, most most of us who've been using Obsidian for a while are used to, which is front matter first, then the rest of your note, and then you have your title up here if you really want, but otherwise the file name title is not there. For now, I like to kind of change it up a little bit and try new things to see how I feel. So for me, I am showing the inline title, but just know that that's something you can toggle on and off. Uh, fun little trivia about this particular redesign. Uh, from my research, I believe they're calling this redesign, this brand new redesign, Dragon Glass, which I have um, a particular fondness for dragons, so it was very cool to see that their redesign name was Dragon Glass. Uh, otherwise, let's see. They talk about the frameless mode, which hides the window title by default. Oh, yeah, right. So do, 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 do. I wonder if I can find that frameless mode piece inside of here. Here we go. Okay, yep. So in the past, if you did it with, I think, native frame. Let's see, bum, 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 bum. Okay, it's this gray bar here at the very top. And so again, some people like seeing their application bar, but most of us are usually trying to preserve screen real estate. And so this extra 10 pixels is kind of redundant for us because we know we're in Obsidian and why does it need to like refer, all, refer to all that? So if you go inside of your appearance, once again, um, by default, I believe now they have it hidden. And so you'll see here that if we Go ahead and actually let me check out Obsidian Frame real quick. I'm actually curious what that looks like to see if it's any different than what I think. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, this looks a little bit better because what you notice now, rather than a gray bar, Obsidian has taken over the styling and said, okay, I'm going to basically provide you the same metadata information, but it'll be integrated into the theme. Personally, whoop, that's for Bartender. Personally, I'm a fan of hiding it entirely because I think it looks cleaner. And I, again, I know when I'm going to be inside of Obsidian and I don't need to know which vault I'm in. So, bum, bum, bum. Oh, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And now you'll see there's nothing at the top. It's very clean, goes to the top, does exactly what you want. Your tabs here. Or actually, let me, let me toggle the stack tabs to show you the value of the top part. There you go. Your tabs are up here. Bumps right up to the menu bar. It looks beautiful. Again, personally for me, this visual redesign has looked absolutely stunning. And so this is very exciting from a visual perspective. And <clears throat> now I'll include the change log for all the other minor stuff that's going through. Uh, Mage Prometheus here is mentioning that I think version 1.0.1 .1 did have a bug. And so they're currently fixing something on that. <clears throat> but as far as where Obsidian is going, we're basically seeing an ushering, I would say, of a new era of stability and plugins that now have APIs that they're going to be calling, how they're going to work. So I think we're going to see a lot of maturation in plugins <clears throat> because, whoo, st struggling today from the drink perspective. <clears throat> All right. 
So what I think we're going to end up seeing here is that the ecosystem as a whole is going to really be able to push hard on on features that they've wanted. And and that's all, what I always found really inspiring about the Obsidian community, to be honest, is that even when they were in beta, people were pushing features left and right. But now that things are stable, we, we know that basically there's predictability in the API. It means people can be like, this is the standard for how this works, which means you can plug into things this way. And so I think we're going to see very rich, <clears throat> very rich plugin ecosystem development. But the other one, which I'm actually particularly interested in at the moment, is the fact that we're going to also see a lot more themes coming out because with this huge UI refresh, this means that, there, well, for theme, theme developers like myself who built like, so I did Night Owl, which is what you see here. There are some things they change that, well, I need to update in order to ensure that any configurations users are making are accurately reflected inside of the theme. And so some of the things, just to show you what, that, what I mean by that, <clears throat> is that they've made it really easy to do things like, for example, there's like accent color, which by the way, I haven't figured out where the accent color actually lives, but once I do, I'm gonna make sure that the variable can be applied and people can customize the theme to their liking. But then you can see here, look, they have the interface font. You can choose the base font for Obsidian. You can choose the text font. You can choose the monospace font. Stuff like that was actually, it was like trickier to do um, in the past. And now it's actually a lot easier to manage. You can actually define your font size, which then changes everything. I mean, it's great, but, I think it leverages a slightly different CSS variable naming system. So I know that, for example, right now, my I don't believe my theme is taking on those changes immediately. So something that's on my to-do list of things that, uh, yeah, I want to take care of. But otherwise, the TLDR on this when it comes to Obsidian version 1.0 is that it has gotten a big UI refresh, basically look and feel, fresh new coat of paint, and it's graduated now from being in beta to a major version 1.0 release which is super exciting. I see here, let's see, let's take a look at the chat. So I'm going to hear, um, I was on Obsidian hiatus for a bit, and when I opened it back up, everything was different. I was so confused. Yeah, that I definitely felt the same when I was going through this as well, because it was, um, a lot of things shifted around originally, and then I think once you get a handle on like, the things that have changed, then it's not so bad. That takes care of it for today. So let's go ahead and switch back on over to the camera. Cool. So today has been a lot of fun. We had a great session today covering version one of Obsidian and honestly, all the possibility it represents for the ecosystem moving forward, knowing that we're now out of beta into a stable version of Obsidian. And so super excited to see all the plugins, theme development, and everything else that comes along with it. So it should be exciting to see where the team goes from there. With that, it's been an absolute blast. Thanks everyone for hanging out and I'll catch you another time. Bye-bye.